G'day everyone, welcome back. Today, we're gonna to be getting back onto the duck board. Um, duck board, swim platform, whatever you wanna to refer to it as. Um, I've got some more wood to finish it off. I've got some dowel, some hardwood Tassie oak dowel to go through and drill and dowel all the joints. Um, that was a pretty good comment that a lot of people made uh, on the previous video, as to yeah, definitely go back and drill and glue and dowel all the corners. Uh, so we're gonna do that. And hopefully, by the end of this video, we're gonna have this thing completely done, sanded, and oiled. Uh, it's, it's gonna be a lot of work, but we're gonna get it done. Um, the one on the boat is about ready to fall in the water, so it's, it's time to get this one finished, and then uh, hopefully we can get it installed pretty soon too. So, all right, um, if this is your first time on the channel, uh, welcome, my name's Tim, the boat, that we're talking about is um, our 34 foot timber cruiser. Um, she's a Hartley marksman. And we're very slowly, <laughs> very slowly bringing her back to a good seaworthy condition. So um, yeah, if that's something you're interested in, please go ahead, definitely subscribe. Um, and you know, anytime a video goes up, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Um, certainly helps me out, helps the boat out. Um, we're very close to with the thousand subscriber mark. So yeah, see if we can push it over the edge and uh, get us to the point where we can help start funding the boat. So, all right, I think first step here is I'm gonna pull all these clamps off and clean up all our overflow glue. I'm hoping that some of the back has actually come off because there's a fair bit of glue under them. But anyway, here we go, let's get it done. All right, so I was sort of, get out of there. I was gonna time lapse getting all this knocked apart, but it occurred to me that when I look at the statistics on YouTube, that there's actually a lot of people here who are new to the channel. So the backstory of the boat, just, you know, because we've got time, the backstory of the boat is that I had a motorbike that I restored, uh, rebuilt. Let's not say restored, I rebuilt it. And rode it around for a while, great bike, loved it. Um, it was a 89 Kawasaki G GPX 750R, or might be a GPZ 750R. Oh yeah, I've worried about that. <coughs> Alright, here we go. Anyway, rebuilt it, um, got it on the road, rode it around for quite a while, and then thought, oh well, I'm done with this, let's sell it and move it on. As I do with most of the projects that I finish, which is not many, but the ones I do finish, I tend to sell, because, I don't know, I like working on things. Anyway, had it up for sale for a while. And then a gentleman contacted me and said, would you like to trade it for a boat? <coughs> and funnily enough, the family and I had actually been sort of in the market for a big boat, big cruiser style. Um, we were originally looking at like the pretty typical fiberglass flybridge sort of thing. Anyway, this boat come up and I said, yeah, let's have a look. Long story short, we ended up doing the deal. So, that was a little over 12 months ago now. Um, in that time, we got the thing back up to scratch. Well, back up to a safe running condition. So, you know, it's still very rough as far as the top decks are concerned. There's still lots of rot in the timber. Uh, timber in the top deck. The hull was rebuilt, more or less rebuilt. Uh, about, best I can work out, about three years before I got it. But the top deck was built at the same time, or rebuilt at the same time, it was up on the hard. But I think the bloke that owned it tried to save himself a bit of money, and this isn't the guy I got it off, this is another guy before him. I think he tried to save himself a bit of money on the top deck and use less than marine grade products. So the top deck didn't fare very well. but. The hull was really sound, the engine was still in, it was uh, neglected, but still good condition. So yeah, we got it to a running point, 
um, cruised it around where it was. So it was in Lake Macquarie, which is about, oh, well, it's about an hour and a bit drive from where I live. And my closest waterways is Port Stephens. So we made the decision to run the boat, fix the boat, get it in a good condition to run it up to Port Stephens. We did that. Didn't go completely smoothly, but we got up here all right. No, you know, nothing dangerous, no loss of life or anything. So that was a win. Although I will give an honorable mention to Marine Rescue because they did have to step in. Um, if you haven't seen the videos, they're on the previous channel. Um, I'll leave a link to that channel if you want to look it up or they will, <coughs> they will get uploaded on this channel as well. Um, yeah, so anyway, we brought it up here, got it on its new mooring, which is where it is now, and then pulled it out of the water, did a lot of work to the underside, new anti-foul, um, fully serviced the leg, serviced the engine, um, got rid of some of the wooden, rotten, rotten timber in the top side, and then started to refit the bathroom, the head, and that brings us to about where we are now. Um, quite a lot of work in 12 months, actually, when you sort of, I mean, I'm fully employed as well. YouTube is not a, not a full-time gig for me. Um, wish it was, but it's not. So, yeah, um, quite a lot of work, but she's still got a long way to go. Um, we've got the, we've got the BMW to finish the engine which I have received all my prices back and that they're pretty reasonable. So I think we're gonna go ahead and order the parts for that. Uh, so we've got the BMW to rebuild, install for a repower, get rid of the little, little four cylinder engine. Now, that engine though, I can't take anything away from that engine. It, every time I go out there, it fires up, it idles, it runs beautifully and it pushes that big boat along comfortably at seven, eight knots. And that to me is pretty crazy to be honest. I mean, it's a 120 horse on a good day downhill and it pushes a 34 foot timber cruiser along pretty happily at, you know, seven knots. That's, yeah, quite remarkable. But yeah, definitely not big enough for the boat. So that, that engine's going, we'll put the BMW in and then there's a lot of timber work to come. And I'm gonna remodel some of the inside as well. Um, I wanna change the layout of the sleeping. Um, redo the back area, definitely redo the roof. Just a lot of woodwork and a lot of structural, top deck structural timber work. So yeah, that's a bit of a, a, bit of a catch up while we're just sort of mowing around. That looks like they're coming off all right. So I'm gonna go through, clean all these up and I might just bust the sander out and just tidy it up so I, oh, we have to get them off there. There we go. Yeah, just so I know what I'm working with. Then we're gonna measure up and start cutting our slats. So, yeah, let's go. Yeah. All right. So here's the plan. <clears throat> These are 90. Um, I'm gonna leave them 90. I originally thought I might split them down the middle and make 245s, but I just, I think that's gonna create a lot of extra work for myself. So anyway, we're gonna leave them 90. We're gonna 45 the ends, so we'll end up with a triangle. Uh, and then I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna have to make a router jig, and I'm gonna router a recess in here, so that these come in and sit flush with the top. That's the plan anyway. Um, they're gonna have a 36 mil spacing. Um, sounds like a random number, but <clears throat> mathematically, it's the way it works out. It, hopefully I don't end up with a compounding error at the end. Actually, I might even work in from each end. Oh, I don't know. I'll figure it out as I go. Um, but yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna cut some more slats, so I need 19 slats, according to the calculator. Uh, I'm gonna cut some more, and then I'm gonna Probably cut all the ends, I think, first. Um, yeah, we'll give it a go anyway. So, what's, yeah, what's the worst that can happen? All 
All right. Well, we're getting there. <laughs> this, it took a long time to get sorted. And I think I figured out why it took me so long to figure the spacing out. Um, essentially, I'm expecting the wood to be perfect, and it's not. And I'm sure that comes as no surprise to a lot of people, but to me, it's really annoying. Um, I'm used to working with steel, and if you buy a piece of steel and it's 20 mil, it's 20 mil. If you buy it, it's 25, it's 25. If it's inch, it's 25.4. I assumed, which is definitely something I shouldn't have done on my part, that these planks were 90 mil. They're not 90 mil, they're 89.7. Every one of them, they vary about 0.1, so they're pretty accurate that way, but I didn't measure them. When you're talking about 21 space, or sorry, 20, 23 spaces, including the end, that 0.3 accumulates out to three mil. Um, 0.3, 10, six mil. So it really kept throwing me. I went back and forth and did the math. I'm like, it should be working and it's just not. So anyway, what we've got here is a space of 23 mil between each plank. <laughs> And it works beautifully to the millimeter. Um, and this is what we're going for. So we've got 19 planks, um, 23 mil spacing, and this is this is my design for each end. So yeah, pointed like that. We're gonna come in, I'm gonna make a router jig and router out just half the thickness of the material so it sits nice and flush. We'll come along and I'm gonna dowel, I'll put a dowel in the middle of each one, and then probably maybe two in there and it should look pretty good i think it should be strong and it is she's going to be heavy i think we have to put a couple extra good sized stainless hinges on the boat because uh this sucker is going to weigh some um but yeah i've set up a little oh well i'm not going to call it a jig but that's basically my mark there so i come in and i've been just setting the timber onto my mark and i know that that's roughly where it is and then once it's cut flip it over and do the other side so I'm gonna come along, I have nearly 40 cuts to do, uh, 38 cuts, and um, we're gonna get it done. Then I'm gonna try and make my router jig. I'm not super sure how I'm gonna do that yet, but you know, we'll figure it out as we go. What we've done so far, and it's kind of worked. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna get all these cut first though, and then we'll get to the rest of it. So this is where we are. I've got my router jig made. So come in and cut the profile. It sits on the edge like that and I'll clamp it where it's gotta be. Um, I had to, I did have to make another slide for the router though. <coughs> so obviously it was gonna run along there just fine, but I had to make this plate for these arms so that I could have a square edge so we can come in the jig and then back out the other side or in and, and out whatever way so that we're cutting the right direction so anyway had to knock that up so that'd work now sort of using using bits of everything so i get it what i would consider exactly right i'm going to use some dividers so i've got them set to what i mathematically worked out the centers to be and i'm going to go along and mark them all out because the only way I can really think to, oop, great, now it's not square. The only way I can really think to make this sort of efficient is to have a mark there. So you can put him on, clamp him on. And really the only way to do that is to go ahead and actually mark them all out. So that's what we're gonna do. And it'll also give me a really good opportunity to check my spacing measurements exactly. If I'm out by a millimeter here and there, you know, it's really not the end of the world, but so long as I don't get to the other end and then I'm out by, you know, 10 mil, say, now's the time to adjust it before I start cutting. So yeah, I'm gonna go along, mark all these out. Then we're gonna start, <laughs> start actually trying to cut it up. And I'm a little bit nervous, but, Oops, sorry, I'm sure it'll be fine. All right, so it was very close, but it's just off. So there's the edge of the wood. 
that's where we are. So we're actually where my vernius go. <clears throat> now I don't, <laughs> I don't, know. I don't know if I'm just being too pedantic or not. If I'm trying too hard to be accurate, but eleven five. <laughs> Is it the same? So are we actually square? 38, not really. Two mil. I could live with two mil being a bit wonky. Uh, 13. Sorry, 11. Oh, let's split the middle and call it 12. There's, what is there, 20 spaces. So we need to increase our calipers by half a mil. Thereabouts. Is that right? 0.5, 10 of them will give us 5, that's 20, so they give us 10. So a fraction over half a mil. Wow. That went really well. Um, the jig worked fantastically. Uh, I didn't really stuff any of them up, so that's good. Happy with that. And I started doing the inlets. So these are, they're only sort of rough in there for now. But I've learned a few things. First one was, like it's, it's not terrible. There's a, there's a little bit of a gap. This next one here, I went a bit far, so there's, you know, there's a little bit of a gap. I'm, I'm not very happy with that one. I may even try and use that somewhere else. Um, hopefully there's one that's slightly smaller and I can try and get that one in there. The stuff up I did with that one was when I marked my lines here to cut, I didn't have the plank sitting perfectly with the center. So if you have a look, there's actually a gap sticking out there and not there. And that's because I didn't have it sitting in the middle. So I had to trim them down to get it to fit. But this one, I just did it. And it, it does come out. That one's bloody beautiful. If I could say so in my best Australian accent. I can't get it back in with one hand. That one's perfect. So... Whatever I did there, I've just got to do that like another 16 more times. Um, yeah, it's not. It's it's a little bit filling, a little bit time consuming. It's probably taking me about maybe 10 minutes of plank, I suppose, to get it to the point where that one, I mean, that one, to be honest, didn't take me that long. So I'm only, all I'm doing for marking out, which, yeah, I don't know if it's fantastic. <laughs> Basically, I'm laying them across, getting the planks in the center lines, and then just drawing a line down each side, and coming in with a circular saw and just slitting it. It's not, something I didn't take into account is the roll. So there's a roll on the edge of these, which means that every single one is gonna have a gap, like a just a small thing in between. There's nothing I can do about it now. Ideally, or you know, hindsight, maybe I should have ripped these down a little bit off each side to get them really nice and square edged like these are but i just yeah we're learning as we go and i just get in there oh come on oh it does fit you saw it um yeah we're learning as we go and i i mean i think it's still going to be quite fine i'm not going to do it now with any of the others it's just going to be be the way that it's going to be all right update time Kind of wish I had a time lapse it now. I think it might have looked pretty cool, but anyway, that's where we are. They're all in. That that took a while. Um, I think I keep saying that pretty much every time I turn the camera on, but it did. They're all pretty good. There's a couple that are a little bit loose, but um, I did actually have a strap around the middle to hold these in because um, I think there's one or two here that are a bit tight. And they're spreading the rails a little bit because these were a little bit better than that as i was doing it but still 
for the most part, they're actually, you know, not terrible. Yeah. So I've marked them all out um, for my dowels. But what I'm going to do, because I don't think the dowels are going to pull it together well enough for the glue to actually grab. Um, I'm going to pre-drill the top ones, pre-drill them, and screw them through. Now, the screws will come out again, and then I'll use those holes as my guide to go right through and then put a dowel in it for strength later. Uh, I think that's going to be the... The best compromise, um, I certainly don't have enough clamps to come along and clamp every end and then I don't know how to clamp the middle so I think screws are going to be where we're at. Um, but what I'm going to do before I actually put all these down is in the interest of sort of order of operations, I'm going to pre-drill them and then I'm going to pull them out and stack them in order because they all custom fit to each hole. Stack them in order and then I'm going to router the outside of the, the outer, the outside of the outside. <laughs> That way, when I put it all back together, once it's dry, once the glue's dry, all I gotta do is pull the screws, dowel it, and then sand it. Um, just trying to think of how to get this done, because I gotta get it installed this weekend, and I don't have a lot of time to do it. So if I keep doubling up operations, it's, yeah, not gonna work well. And the screw heads stick up too high. That's, yeah, that's why I was actually doing it, sorry. Now I remember. The screw heads stick up too high for me to run the router around once it's screwed on. freaking disaster <sighs> doesn't fill me with much confidence <coughs> so I was just flipping it back over from sanding the underside that glue joint broke just there no good and then this one I mean I was probably being a bit rough with it but this one the glue joint didn't break the actual the timber broke so we're going to be putting a dowel there and there and I'm going to screw down into it. Uh, I think once, you know, all the slats are on, it's going to be more than strong enough, but that was disappointing. Anyway, we're all sanded, routed. We got a, just a 10 mil bull nose on it. Um, I didn't really want anything too fancy. Where's my little bit? There it is. So I tried, I tried that one, but I, I like the look of it, but I feel like it's sort of going to promote splinters and things and we don't want that. So I tried it a couple of different depths and I think just the, just the good old bull nose. Nice and smooth, you're not going to pick up on it. It should help with splinters and yeah, we'll be good. <sighs> Alright, well, there comes a point where you just got to bite the bullet and I guess, I don't know, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I wanted to do this project as best as I could. I wanted to not use fasteners. That's just not gonna work. Um, like you saw in the last clip, it broke, um, broke at the glue joint. It just doesn't give me a lot of faith in the glue joint. Um, and also on top of that, I'm running out of time. Um, I would ideally like to get this thing installed. I mean, yeah, it's, night time now and tomorrow i'm heading out to the boat and i want to install it as you can see there's a whole lot of no duckboard um the only so what i wanted to do was like i explained put them down screw them so they all hold tight pull the screws out drill them and dowel them i don't have time for that that's probably another good two-day operation to allow it to dry pull the screws dowel it, allow the dowel to dry, or allow the glue around the dowel to dry, and then sand it, and then oil it. It's, I don't have enough time. It's pretty simple. So, I'm gonna sorta, I'm gonna cheat. 
And I'm not overly happy about it, as you might be able to tell from the tone of my voice, but here we are. So, instead of drilling and putting the little uh, like wafer head screws, flat head screws in, um, I'm gonna use brass countersunks and what that will allow me to do. So I did these last night. So after I come home from work last night, I put these three in and then ran out of time. So these are glued. I pulled the screws out. Um, I've got like a countersink, pre-drill countersink bit here. Um, all the dow, oh, sorry, all the planks are still drilled big enough for clearance hole on the brass screws. And then this is just coming through and, and pilot drilling the base timber. Anyway, so we're gonna put brass screws all through it. Um, I mean, it'll, it'll still look nice. I mean, it's still brass on timber. It'll be oiled, it'll be nice. It's not as nice as what I was planning on, but I mean, at some point you've got to cut your losses and just do the best you can. This is probably the best I can, um, especially given the time frame. So yeah, <coughs> nothing really changes from here. Um, except that tomorrow morning when I come out, I'm going to get up early and I'm going to come down and I'm going to scrape all the old glue off, um, all the glue, because this is a foaming, uh, you can see it up here pretty good. So it's a foaming glue. So it makes a bit of mess as it dries. So I'm going to come through, scrape all the glue, give it a quick sand, take it out to the boat and install it. And then I'm going to oil it. So I'm going to oil it on the boat, um, because it just needs to be installed. Crappy excuse, but these are the real, real world sort of life constraints that we have i've only got so much time to do things and at some point it's just got to get done so anyway that's a really long-winded way to say that i'm just not as good as i thought i was but it'll still come out all right i think so, and then i suppose i do have the option in the future if i really don't like it and it just bugs me too much i can pull those screws out drill them and dowel them and glue them afterwards it's not the end of the world i suppose but yeah Anyway, make it happen. So yeah, back on time lapse and then I'll finish gluing and brass screwing all of these. Couldn't resist. Plus I went and got another beer, so. Ugh. So I have a jar of boiled linseed oil. It was given to me by a very old friend. No idea how old it is, but it's what I've used on all my ax handles and tomahawks and things like that. So, let's see what she looks like. I gave it a sand, so it's all, yeah, pretty good. Oh, I think that's going to look really freaking good. But, I mean, I'm probably a little bit biased. <laughs> it's going to take some oil. <laughs> Definitely going to take some oil. I might have to end up buying, up, buying some more, but... Probably should be putting, I don't know. Should put gloves on for it? Probably. My gunner. Nope. Well, I'll tell you what. That is the wrong rag for it. <laughs> it's leaving fibers all through it. Crap. Ha ha ha. 
Oh, yeah. Well, as you can see, we made it back aboard. It's worse than what I was expecting as far as everything's quite damp and wet. There wasn't too much water in the bilge, which is good, but this whole back area out here is wet. This roof is, it's completely stuffed. Um, I think once this duckboard's done, this back area is the next portion to take to get attention because it's <laughs> it's done. I mean, the seats were all wet. This floor is pretty much drenched, um, and I'd say that's where most of the water's getting into the bilge. Um, so it's yeah, it needs work. Anyway, um, the duckboard is way too big to try and get out on the on the tinny. So I'm going to fire this up, and we're going to go and tie up to the wharf. That wharf is a bugger for me to tie up to, especially by myself. Um, I mean, I'm not that good at it yet. Um, I haven't had that much practice doing it by myself, I mean. Um, and also, it's a tiny wharf. It's probably four meters long, five meters long, and, you know, PR is 10 meters long. So, it's like one shot. You should just gotta get it right at this back corner. If you miss it, you go around and do it again, so. Anyway, I will be pulling it up on the starboard side, so it will be on the driver's side, um, which is good. I just got to get all my ropes ready. I might check the oil and fan belts and everything, and then, uh, yeah, we'll drop the mooring line and cruise on over and get loaded for the day. Yes, I did. All right. All right. We got fuel. Well, oh, we got oil. Let's see. It's been... <laughs> Probably close to two months since I've turned the key on this. Sad to say. There we go. One pump. Here we got oil pressure, it's charging. Brilliant. Okay. Alright, button everything up. I'm gonna go and run my ropes. And we'll get it happening. You're never going to believe this. <laughs> it's always when there's no one around to see, too. I absolutely nailed it. First go. Cruised in. I should have had the camera going, but to be honest, I was stressing and, yeah, trying to concentrate. So just cruised in. The wind's blowing me onto the wharf, which is really good. And, uh, yeah, basically motored it. So I was sitting, the bow was about level with the edge of the wharf. <coughs> Probably about four or five feet out something like that and uh, the wind just blew me in and flicked her into gear rode it forward flick the bow line on flick the stern line on <laughs> I was stressing I mean I'm still a bit shaky as I said this is actually this is the first time ever that I've pulled onto a wharf completely 100% by myself there's nobody else on board oh I feel good now that was stressing but I feel good so all right let's get the duckboard loaded all the other bits and bobs Get on our way over to Lemon Tree. Alright, well, not entirely sure what the audio is going to be like. Cruising along, 7 knots, 2800, happy as Larry. Um, just untied from the uh, marina, marina, just the wharf. Got the duckboard on board, a couple other bits and bulbs projects. And uh, Uncle Dev actually come over and gave me a hand to load the duckboard, he's in his boat. So. We're just cruising around Lemon Tree now and uh, see if I can't tie up again. Let's see if I can make it two from two for good tie ups. So, anyway, we we'll are right. We're just cruising. Temperatures and pressures are perfect. Um, the prop is still schmick, very much golden. So, yeah, prop speed, I mean, so far, it's good. So, all right, we got, I don't know, probably it's only a 10 minute run around to the other side of uh, Bull Island. Um, We'll tie up. Uh, see you over there.
All right, well, we made it. Um, that one was not so textbook. <laughs> so I had to come in and we had to spin the boat. Um, and I'm glad Uncle Neville was here. Um, I managed to throw the rope to him and we sort of dragged it in there, no worries. But we're backed up and we're gonna get this duckboard done. Um, so that's what she currently looks like. That corner there is just completely falling apart and the rest of it is not much better. So, and it's, you know, a fair bit smaller than the one I just made. So yeah, I got my waders on. We're gonna get this one ripped off and um, get the new one on. Right, uh, there we have it. She's on. Does it hinge? It does hinge. Oh, it's not fantastic. <laughs> so, I definitely need two hinges, bigger ones than those. I might even put a few more across it because it is, she's, she's a big bit of gear. So we'll put more out there. And I thought the back of the boat was flat, but it's not. It's got a bit of a, a, bit of a bow in it. So we'll get some bigger hinges out here and um, that'll help support it. And I'm gonna, now these chains are on a bit more of an angle, I think I'm gonna come in here and move them up so that they get a, a better pull. But I can stand up on it and, you know, it's mostly good. So, yeah, that's good. It's been, geez, I don't know, well over three weeks um, in the making. So it's still creaking, stop creaking, it's scaring me. Yeah, well over three weeks, it's still, best looking part of the boat you reckon it's certainly the freshest bit of wood on the boat <laughs> yeah um so the only thing i'm going to do is sand it and oil it but i'll do that off camera you'll certainly see it in another video so yeah i just there's not much more to say she's on and it's big um this cable here is for my new transducer that i just put on that'll be in a separate video and i'm about to finish that and then we're done and then cruise it back over so get it back over put her on a mooring and not even crack a beer it's probably going to be getting close to that that time of day so all right thanks for watching um if you haven't already like i've said go and subscribe um the new channel is over a thousand now so we just need some more watch hours so watch the videos if you like them watch the videos and if you do like them definitely give them a thumbs up um and we'll keep making more we got miles of work to do on this old girl actually the next big step is that roof that roof is stuffed so that's the next major timber job anyway subscribe notifications on that way you can see when that comes up yeah we'll catch you on the next one